All right, four goals in five games, we, but no, no, no appearances is as important as this one. Welcome to the breakaway, Trevor Ammon. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You agree, right? This is a big one for you. This is yeah, this is a new one for me. This is, yeah, have you ever done a podcast before? I've done a podcast, but not one being filmed. Not one being filmed. Well, we are big time. It is being recorded on the phone. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you never know. Uh, I want to start with, uh, we got a lot. We got a lot to get into. Um, and obviously, you're, you're new to Sacramento. But from what we've heard, it's, you haven't been around that long. You already got a nickname. Is that true? That is true. That's what I've, I've been called, Mr. Saturday now. Yeah. Um, don't know how that one came. Well, I guess I do. Because Jared would always talk about, Jared Timmer would always talk about how his favorite days were Fridays. Yes. And so after the home opener, I made a joke like, oh, my favorite day is Saturday. <laughs> and now they call, now the boys call me Mr. Saturday. So. Well, yeah. I mean, fair enough. <laughs> you score, uh, score two on your debut. That, uh, yeah. That'll happen. Nick Ross says that he thinks when you wake up on Saturday, you're a different person than the other six days. Yeah, it's just, I mean, for me, there's nothing like a game day, right? right? Like whether you're home or away, obviously home is better. I like being home a lot more than I like being away. But game days are just, it's a different vibe. It's a different feeling. You get to go through a whole day and like you have, most people have routines. They, they get to do their own thing kind of throughout the day. And it's just different, like, I get to sleep in a little bit more. Yeah. No, there's no pressure to, like, wake up and go play right away. So, for me, it's it's always been different playing on a uh, game day. And Saturdays are just our, our game day, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What about what about when we have a Wednesday game? What's going to happen those days, man? Gonna uh, to... It'll be the same. Yeah. I mean, Wednesdays are... The nickname might not live very long. <laughs> Wednesdays Wednesday games are... It's the same. It's kind of just more of, like, that game day yeah. atmosphere of, like, waking up and going through your routine like I said and just playing playing a game I don't know so what's your like what what changes for you on game days mentally is your focus tighter are you more dialed in what changes I don't know I think for me it's just you get that extra adrenaline rush and you get that extra energy that extra motivation like I'm playing for for to help our team get three points or I'm playing to get a win in the open cup or things like that so it's just you're playing for a lot more and I say this in like the, in a weird way because when you're at training you're playing to get better for right. the weekend right so it's like it just it, there's more meaning behind it I feel like mm. and it it stands out and, and I think that's what people people remember people don't see you at training right? right so people remember you on your your game days and right that's just kind of my my mindset when I go into it you strike me as somebody who has a lot of confidence, right? And we'll talk about this kind of throughout. We'll talk a little bit about you going from college to, to the pro level. You've worked your way up from League One, scoring a lot of goals last year. You come into this season, probably, you know, there's, hey, it's a different level. Maybe it's a different, but you, I mean, I'd imagine for you, coming into this season, confidence is your, you know, hey, I can do this no matter what level it's at. Is that, is that something that you've kind of used to be like your backbone as a player? Um, to an extent, yeah. I mean, as a, being a striker, it's, it's a bit different because our confidence kind of comes from seeing the ball hit the back of the net. Sure. Right. So preseason was a bit of a struggle. I mean, I only scored one goal in preseason throughout like, I think eight or nine matches. But then when I go into the first game and I get a brace, it like your confidence skyrockets yeah. like right away. So yeah. it's just kind of, um, for me, it's just, I, I believe in myself, but it takes seeing things like happen, I guess you can say. So, to, like, solidify that. I got you. So, and then last year, obviously, you scored a lot of goals. Most goals on the continent for a calendar year. Um, made a lot of headlines, obviously. I would imagine when you're scoring goals like that, your confidence is high. Does the, does the goal feel bigger? Like, does it feel like, hey, I, you go into every single game expecting to get one? Or maybe, I mean, last year, maybe two. <laughs> maybe even this year, too. Yeah, I mean, when you see the ball hit the back of the net so frequently when you're scoring goals frequently you're kind of expecting everything to go in and sometimes you get lucky there were i think three or four lucky deflections i had last year which i'm fortunate to have but in those moments like all you can think of is i'm in form i'm playing well just shoot and a lot of the good times if you're playing well and you're in form it things happen for you so I feel like you make a lot of dangerous runs, like even the own goal in Indy. Uh -huh. Like that was kind of, you mean, you don't get credit for it, 
But basically, the reason why that goal was scored is because you made a dangerous run, ball came in, and then they just basically couldn't defend and get the ball out. And when I watched the way you were making runs on even opening night, it struck me as, wow, this is a guy who's coming in day one who makes a lot of dangerous runs. You feel comf- You look like you feel comfortable with the other guys. Um, is that something that, like, in this offseason and training camp, you felt like, hey, this is, you know, I'm comfortable with this team to be able to make these runs. They're going to hit me, I know. What has that been like? Yeah, so, I mean, that's one of my strongest aspects of my game is my ability to make these – those types of runs and I mean in Indy we talk about it all the time making near post runs made a near post run something good happens yeah so you don't get credit for it but those are the things that you kind of like you got just got to keep doing them um and in terms of being comfortable with the guys I think it's still like we're still kind of getting more and more on the same page as we play more games together and I think Colorado Springs the first half on Saturday was an unbelievable showing of yeah of what we're starting to build as a team and so yeah I think I'm getting more and more comfortable and I'm getting more comfortable being just in Sacramento as a whole so I think that that's helping a lot you you mentioned the the near post runs you say that your runs are a you know strength of yours how how do you formulate that strength like how does I mean obviously you've been a striker so you kind of know when to make runs but what types of things like take a fan kind of behind the scenes for you when you're about to make a run what are you looking for for me most of the time I'm looking for space mm. like I just I, I know a defender is going to be on me so if I can get a yard or two yards of separation or even half a yard of separation from that defender then it's almost it, it helps me get more chances but it also helps me score more goals and it it allows us to to win games and so i mean when i make a run sometimes i'm thinking about it knowing like the coach wants us to make a near post run or the coach wants us to make a this type of run right um but most of the time i if i'm gonna make a run like i'll look kind of see where everybody's at and then just kind of make a last second move either like just hold my run Mm -hmm. or just go so what has it been like in this system? I'm sure you played in a lot of systems, some probably mm-hmm. similar to this system in Sacramento under Mark Briggs. But have you had to change that mentality at all coming into, not mentality, but the way you make runs to fit the system a little better? Or has it been more of just keep doing the same kind of runs? I think it's kind of a bit of both. Like it, you, can't take, um, you can't take out players like uh, their strengths and sure. their good aspects of their game. But all you can do is add to it. So... Mark's always talking about wanting us to make these near post runs. And so I think I've added a, a bit more of those. I mean, Orange County at home opening night, I saw a space at the near post and just took off and went. So it's things like that. Like you can just add stuff. And, and I think that it's been helping me this year a little bit to, to have that added to my game. So let's talk about that night and that goal. So you come in to, to Sacramento. First off, uh, you get the start that night. Mm-hmm. What do you remember? before the match walking out in front of the sellout crowd what do i remember um i remember it being loud i remember just feeling excited i remember um i was i I felt happy i felt home i felt at a place where i need it's a new challenge for me i need to kind of remake a name for myself at, at this new place that is bigger than what i've ever been at so well, you did that, but that first goal, you just mentioned it. I feel like that was quite the welcoming party, right? And then the second one was, yeah. to me, the holy shit moment. <laughs> um, take us through that, if you don't mind. What did you see um, in, on that second goal? I mean, like you said, I, I saw an opportunity to make a run. I saw Nick get the ball in space, and I keep telling them all the time. I talk about it with them a lot. Um, to look for my runs and to look at those runs in behind. And so I, I made a good run. He played an amazing ball. And then the rest is history. I mean, I just go at the guy and just shoot. Yeah, man, because you, you're <laughs> – I mean, great, great. great. That's, that's exactly what happened. But it seemed like when I – you know, watching that play, I was like, oh, he's going to cross it. And then all of a sudden, boom, strike with your off foot, back mm-hmm. of the net. I mean, it was, it was an unbelievable strike. Is that – I mean, and then all of a sudden, we quickly realized, like, oh, man, this guy came to play. 
I mean, what, so so what was the the celebration like for you? Because that was in front of the big end line fans. Yeah. Um, what was that celebration like for you? The celebration was. It was kind of like some people may see it as like, oh, he's kind of being selfish, like pointing at his name. But it was more in my eyes, the way I saw it was I was introducing myself yeah. to, the, to the fans and showing them that I'm here and I mean, I mean business and I'm, I'm ready to win some things with, with Sacramento. So I love it. Four goals in five games for you. Mm-hmm. Again, I mentioned the, the own goal that your run basically caused. You've been off to a great start. It's been really, really fun to watch. Um, what types of things are you still working? I know you mentioned just a second ago, like, hey, you know, we're still working on fine tuning some things. Mm-hmm. What are some of those conversations you guys are having in training about, hey, trying to really dial it in so you guys feel 100% comfortable with each other on the pitch? Yeah, it's things like, I mean, I'll talk to Jack a lot because he, he plays a lot of crosses and, yeah. and I'll tell him kind of how I think about it when he's looking, um, when he gets the ball, how I'm thinking and and you just kind of have those conversations and let each other know like what you what you want and what what you're seeing and what he's seeing so that that way you can be on the same page on on Saturday nights. <laughs> on Saturday night, Saturday Mr. Nights. Mr. <laughs> Saturday. All right. OK, so uh, I want I'm curious as a goal scorer, you scored a lot of goals last year. Are you type mm-hmm. of person? It doesn't seem like it based on your answers. You don't you don't black out. Obviously, you can't not remember the goal. You seem like you are the guy who you can remember every single small element of each goal. Is that true? Um, most, most, some of them are, you forget some things about some of them, but yeah. most of the time I remember pretty much everything. Do you go back when you guys watch film and I'm sure you guys break down, I don't, do you guys break down the actual goals or do you talk about more of just the, the, Hey, we should have scored here. Here's what happened here. Like, cause I'm, I'm curious if you're watching the game, you're watching, you score a goal. You're like, Oh, I didn't even think, I didn't even re- realize that this happened or X happened. No, I mean. If you score, so the way I see it is like if you score a goal, you've done something right. Sure. Right. So most of the time when you watch goals back, it's most of the time it's going to be something positive you sure. have to say. It's it's the other stuff when you're not scoring or when you're missing chances or say turn turning the ball over things like that is those are the types of things that you're going to end up like kind of nitpicking mm-hmm. and being like you could do this, you could do that. I mean, my chance in the second half on Saturday. Right, I've watched that one back a few times, and there's some things that I think I could have done differently, mm-hmm. and there's some things that I think were decided for me based on how the defender recovered and yeah. how the goalie came out. But there's always you can always change something if mm-hmm. it doesn't go in the back of the net. <laughs> you can always fix something. Right. 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 So, what about um, you know a lot of teammates this year? You have Roro, who's been around a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, Russell Cicerone, a lot of different guys who are, are very, very talented. Have you been picking their brains? Have you been learning little things from them? Um, have you guys have conversations about little things? Maybe they're, they could be very likely learning something from you too. Yeah, I mean, I speak with Roro a lot. Um, I feel like I have a good relationship with him, and he, he knows the game so well, and he, he tells me certain things in certain instances, like you could do this better, you could do that better, you could do this instead of what you did even though what you did wasn't necessarily bad. He said, here's a second option. They kind of help you out and, and give you like those types of things. Um, and with Russ, it's, it's a lot of just making sure we're on the same page and, and doing the things that we know we're both strong at and putting each other in good positions to mm-hmm. succeed, so. And when we see a game like, like Saturday where you guys each get a goal, mm-hmm. Russell with the assist to you, mm-hmm. um, and then, you know, I mean, that's, that's a that's a dream come true when you have a two-headed monster kind of like that up top is yes it's gonna make it a lot of fun for you guys i would imagine yes it's uh it's exciting when he gets it when he got his first goal i was excited too because he he's been dying for it he's been really really wanting to score and he's been showing you that with all the shots he takes during games yeah and i was happy that he was able to finally get one because i can understand and i see the potential that we have if there's two of us up top that are scoring a lot of a lot of goals i mean it's pretty much it's like who do you, you pick one at yeah, that point you're not right. gonna be able to get both of them so. right right because you you know you're gonna leave him more open and he's gonna get you more open yeah. essentially which is great so. um we talked about getting into the system um what was what was camp like let's back up a little bit to the beginning of the season you come in new player a lot mm-hmm. of returning guys um, what was that like coming into, into the team? Obviously, you've mentioned you feel like you have something to prove, which you did on opening night. But what was that like in camp? Yeah, I mean, in my honest opinion, I feel like I struggled a little bit at the beginning, but I think 
over the course of it, it was kind of like getting better every single day. Um, I've never been the type of guy to just automatically go into a group and just fit in right away. Sure. So it takes me a minute to, to kind of fit in with the guys. And I think that once I started to like open up a little bit more and, and build that relationship, things were getting better and better. So for me, it was just that, but also trying to balance that with getting used to playing with better players, the mm -hmm. higher intensity, the more effort people put in in training, like things like that is, you, you kind of adjust to it and it and I think that overall it's made me better and I think you kind of saw that on opening night is sure. I feel like I fit in pretty well starting that game so I would agree um but you mentioned the the um the intensity level the the difference mm -hmm. can, can you can you kind of find the couple things that are different between what you experienced at Hillstorm in League One and in Sacramento with the championship it's not like it's it's not really like anything crazy right it's just sure. there's that you can tell there's an extra level there's like people are like there's quality on the ball like you there's quality a hailstorm too don't get me wrong but they move the ball so much faster here so you're like you got to do it there they tell you if you're not working hard mm -hmm. whereas at, at hailstorm it was it was a bit different like mm -hmm. we were kind of like we would work hard but some people sometimes it would be like an off day and you could just tell and I don't know how to explain it but okay. no, no that's all right. different <laughs> yeah and then you you mentioned before we started that um you have to pinch yourself sometimes because you're living in California Can, what mm -hmm. why, why why do you have to pinch yourself like what is it about living here in California and Sacramento that that makes you feel like that <laughs> um my honest opinion and this is like an honest opinion is I never thought I would live in California really yeah, I never thought that, and not necessarily Sacramento. I just never thought, in as a state and in, in, in a whole, I would. I never thought I would live here. Um, Why is that? I have family in Colorado. I have family in Texas, but I've always like thought about like growing up was always like my goal is to make it out east. Oh, okay. And I kind of went out west. <laughs> yeah. Which is fine because um, I'm happy here and I love it here. But it's it's crazy to me because soccer brought me here mm -hmm. right like there's a point where i didn't know if any of this was going to be possible right sure. so i was playing at a d2 college nobody really cared and then i got an opportunity and now here we are so it's kind of like a surreal moment to be kind of like working your way through the ranks in a, in a sense which yeah. is there's something to that me, man i, yeah. I want to talk about the the d2 to pro soccer aspect because you don't see that very often when did you realize, obviously, you're at Midwestern State, mm -hmm. you're a D2 All-American in what, 2021? Yes. So what, when did you realize that, okay, maybe actually I, I am going to be able to go pro. Maybe I have what it takes. I realized it. It was actually at the end of summer of 2021. I was playing NPSL, uh, had a really good um, NPSL season with the Denton Diablos. We won the national championship. And I got a text or – dm on instagram from amen from amen zayed the, co <laughs> the coach at hailstorm and he kind of told me what was up like asked if i could get on a call with him i i did and then from basically from then on it became a reality he told me he wanted me he um to come play for them and so i considered it i was looking at and then i was like yeah you know i'll give it a shot did I think it was going to get pushed this far where two years later I'm playing uh, the number one team in the USL championship? Maybe not, but I'm here. I'm taking my opportunity as it is. So it's kind of it's, it's different. A, it's a pretty cool story, man. It's yeah. a pretty cool, pretty cool element. What the, cause you, you know, D2, you go to league one, which I'm sure at the time you're <clears> like, man, I can't believe I'm playing pro soccer. This is unbelievable. And then you have such a good year last year, put yourself on the map. And now you're here in Sacramento playing for the USL championship. And not only that, you got four goals in five games. Yeah. It's a pretty it's unbelievable story. Yeah. You got, is, is it's gotta be, is it like a, I can't believe this is, and is that what you kind of mean by the California aspect of like? Yeah, it's kind of like, it's sur surreal that I've been able to come here for something that I love. And it's always been a dream to only have to worry about playing soccer yeah. every day. So when that became a reality, I was like, okay, and then, kind of adjusted my first year a little bit. And then my second year, 
I knew what I was capable of based off of what I did my first year, even though I didn't have the, the goals, the results from the first year, I knew what I was capable of and it, it showed last year. And then I think now I just have to keep reminding myself that it just work hard, focus, do all the things that you did last year. It's just at a different level now. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I know we talk about how good of a start you have, but I know that you, you don't want this to stop. This is, it's not like you, yeah. you're here and, hey, I scored four goals. Like, obviously, that is not your main goal. Um, but I think it's pretty an unbelievable story how fast you go from D2 to and move your way up slowly but surely and then, right. and then um, obviously off to a good start. I want to ask, um, so you played, you mentioned the national champion. You played for Detroit, right, for in the NPSL? What was that I like? Did. At the time, it was unbelievable. To be honest, I was like, oh, holy cow, I'm playing in front of 7,000 fans yeah. every home match. Well, and you'll be was, back there this year. It was fun. <laughs> and now I get to go back. So yeah. we'll I don't see know if it's going to be as fun on the road, though. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. But yeah. They're off to a good start. They are. 4-0 with our former assistant coach, Danny Dicchio, yeah. a couple, uh, couple former players. Uh, we played in Colorado Springs last Saturday. You mentioned uh, Colorado. You get a goal there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you had a lot of family members in attendance. I did. I had about 12 family and then three or four family friends. You know they really love you if they're in that freezing cold and wind. Yes, yes, you know? they did. They, they, they suffered through the weather for, <laughs> to watch a game. So At least you scored early, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. At least I got it out of the way. What was the wind like on Saturday? I got to ask. How hard is that to play in? It's not necessarily hard to play in. It's just because – you can still play soccer. It's just, it makes it that much colder and it's, it just makes it that much less fun. And <laughs> I don't know, for me, it's a, at that point, it becomes a mental game. And I think that on Saturday we won that mental game. I completely, yeah. I thought you guys played so well that game. It yeah. was exciting to see. Uh, and then you come back and now it's 75 degrees and sunny in, in here in Sacramento. Uh -huh. I'm sure that's a nice, nice yeah. reminder of, oh yeah, all right. This yeah. is a little different. I like I like this weather yeah. the best. Yeah, so. it's supposed to be 82 on Thursday. I know I can't wait. But you have you have you haven't quite experienced the Sacramento summer yet, though. I have not, but I have experienced a Texas Texas summer. summer. There so. you go. S similar. Similar. So all right, well there you go. I mean that that makes sense. <laughs> okay, I want to mention. Um, so you played it. Did you have any like? F I maybe I'm sure Hailstorm was probably playing this weekend. But did you mm. get any text from anybody from the Hailstorm like, hey, saw you're in town getting the win against? switchbacks or I didn't I talked to one of the, their players after their open cup win the other the other day or the other week um, but other than that I didn't really talk to many of them no. Hailstorm is a pretty good open cup team they're a team you don't want to never oh, don't really want to see in the open I cup know, they're pretty they, good for some reason when it came down to open cup they always got it done. So they got it done. They got it done. I want to ask a little more um, about life in Sacramento. What what parts of uh, I know you haven't been here that long, but I, what have you been able to do in Sacramento off the field? So to be honest, not much yet. We've done more down in like the Napa area because that's kind of like our vibe, and okay. we're gonna get married down there. In, oh yeah, um, in November. So. We've been down there a few times, but I haven't really done much in SAC. We've been to a couple of restaurants for different occasions and things like that. But, Nothing. I mean, it's kind of hard with soccer. We were sure. gone in Tucson for a week, and then right. some other things happen, and, yeah. you know. You got to, you know, you, there's everybody talks about, are there things that you are wanting to do here around, around obviously probably not necessarily, but Tahoe, Bay Area, all those things? Yeah, I mean, I want to, I think we'll check out Lake Tahoe during the summer yeah i don't know if i want to go up there during the winter yeah i left the cold weather for yeah. a reason <laughs> um but in terms of other things to do i mean we'll probably go down to san francisco many times just because it's close to napa and yeah. we have uh my fiance's grandfather that lives in napa so oh really we have some family down there that we'll go visit from time to time but I know this is a stereotypical Napa question, but are you are you guys you guys enjoy wine or no? You just like the area or yeah. So we we like wine. Her family loves wine. Oh, okay. Big big wine people. So they took us out there for her twenty first birthday, and we kind of fell in love with the area and just kind of decided that if we were to get married, that that's where we we're gonna do it. So we're gonna go down there and do it. That's fantastic in November. 
in November. Man, could be a big <coughs> November for you. With a I lot know. of things happening, man. Could I be. Know. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, all right, I gotta I gotta ask uh, some questions here at the end. We'll have some fun here at the end. Uh, we mentioned you're tied for second in the Golden Boot. I know it's early, uh-huh. but like the mentality of scoring goals. Can you? I would imagine it's a lot easier to score goals when you're feeling confident. What's it like when you're we have a drought? Like what? How do you get your? How do you stay focused? Keep that tight mentality during a drought. Um, for me, it's it's kind of just making sure I'm focused on each opportunity that comes. I mean, look at Indy, right? Like, should have scored that game. <laughs> should have kept it going, but. I also know that. Do you do I'm that a, every game, though? Are you that, you're like, are you that way every game? Like, oh, I should have scored this one. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm the type of player, I feel like I get a lot of chances, and a lot of the times if I'm getting a lot of chances, I know one of them's going to go in. Mm-hmm. And if they're not, then they're just not. I mean, what can you do, right? You just got to keep focus on the next one. You forget about it, mm-hmm. move on, keep going. So for me, that's just kind of how I've tried to, try to focus. And... I also know that I think last year I only went like three games without a goal the whole year. Yeah, so not much of a drought in there. Not much of a drought, and it's kind of just keeping that same mentality of you're going to get chances. Just if you get the first one, focus on getting a second. Yeah. If you get a second, focus on the third. I feel like goes. if you compare you and Russ in terms of that mentality of scoring goals, mm-hmm. Russ, like you mentioned, really gets really hungry. Uh, he's you know chirping, at, especially at the official. We've, yeah. seen, we've seen it happen a few yeah. times. Uh, you seem a little quieter on the field, right? What has it been like to kind of play with a little bit of a polar opposite of yourself kind of up top? It's been it's been fun. I mean, he has high expectations for himself. He has high expectations for the group. So yep. getting used to those types of things has is, is been take, took a little bit. But I think at this stage, I'm I'm good. I know that I I just got to focus on myself and focus on doing my job. And once I do my job, I know I have full faith in Russ to do his job, mm-hmm. and and he'll score lots of goals this year. Yeah. Um, and I mean, yeah, just kind of. Well, when you score together. goals, it's good for him. When he scores a goal, it's good for you because teams aren't going to know how to game plan against yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what has it been like with Coach Briggs so far? I feel like I've had a pretty good relationship so far. I mean, he's helped. We've talked a lot. We we get along he he's had those conversations with me about making sure i i start focusing and getting my intensity my work rate right and things like that and then obviously he helped me out during preseason he said don't worry about it the goals will come your goals will come just keep keeps encouraging me keeps pushing me to be better every day and it's something that i i really appreciate and I, i'm thankful to have him as our coach I want to ask, too, about – I talked to Katie Norton about – I guess it was a couple of weeks ago – talking about how much you've improved just physically uh-huh. in the offseason going into the season. I think your ver- – I don't want to give away the exact number. But your <laughs> vertical has, like, gone way up. Yeah. Uh, is that true? What has that process been like? I know you've been working hard in the gym, yeah, too. I've been doing a lot. I feel like I came into this year and I, I had some, some personal goals for myself, not necessarily – to only improve physically but obviously like some things off the field that I think are helping me out and now they're translating to things on the field in the weight room things like that um but yeah I've had a lot of conversations with Luke our strength and conditioning coach yep. I've had a lot of conversations with like different staff members about different things that I could be working on different things that I could do to improve my game cuz I'm I'm not perfect sure and I want to be the best player that I can be and that's something I told I told Mark when I when I signed here is that I I wanted to see how far I could push my career and mm-hmm. if that's Sacramento's the end of that then Sacramento's the end but if it's MLS or somewhere in Europe sure we'll see um but I think that working hard every day and making those little changes and realizing things on your own and knowing that I'm not a professional at certain things, but other people have been doing that for a long, long time. So yeah, I want to ask too about the the calls you were getting in the off season because I'm sure it wasn't just uh-huh. us. But when you start realizing the realization, of, obviously you know you had a great year. Mm-hmm. You probably think in your head like, oh man, I could probably have a chance to move up to the next level. But when you get the call fr- from these USL Championship teams like Sacramento, like what was your initial reaction to that? Yeah, so my initial, <laughs> my initial reaction, 
when Sack was interested, was I was kind of surprised because I didn't really, I didn't realize, or I didn't know that a team that was doing so well. Obviously, every team wants to get better, but I figured that they were they were good. They yeah. were, they weren't gonna they were scoring goals. They were winning games. So why do you need a striker, right? Yeah. But I think I was very grateful that they they called and. It was definitely an exciting opportunity for me, so. Well, that's fantastic, man. I want to ask, too, what about interests? And we'll wrap up here in a second. Um, in, what, are your, what, what else are you doing off the pitch? What are you, what are you interested in? <laughs> what I do off the pitch? Go home and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wine. We got wine. Uh, we got wine. Napping. I have, a, I have a dog. Dog. Um, I love my dog more than a lot of things. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll do anything for, for my dog, but... I hang out with my dog. I hang out with my fiance. I, we try to find different things that we could potentially do, um, and it's just I, obviously. I mean, I play some FIFA, play some video games here yeah. and there. But I mean, I just try to chill when I'm off the field because being out in the sun, and the heat every day is it's fun, but it takes a toll. So yeah, you got to save up for Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> gotta save. Up for gotta recover for the Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we'll wrap up here. What uh, I said in the beginning, we've uh, we've asked guys bring bring a question. You got a question for me? What's the best restaurant in Sacramento? Oh God, this is what Nick asked last week, a couple weeks ago. Nick has. Have you seen Nick's list? I haven't, but my fiance has a list as well. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. I would ask Nick for his list. He has it broken down. He he could be like. Nick could be like a food like journalist <laughs> okay. with his list. He's got rankings. He has All like right. categories like Chinese, Japanese, date night, which to me is how do you how does that? Yeah. I get it, but like it, there's overlaps overlapping there. All right, so best best restaurant, uh, what kind of food? I love Mexican food. Mexican food is my favorite food. So I, have you been Anything. to Zocalo? I love Zocalo. Zocalo. Their carnitas tacos right here I'll around the check corner. Check it out. Very good. Very I'll good. Have to check it out. A lot of people are like. They, people don't like that decision, just so you know. So okay. Nick, Nick was like, yeah, I've been there. It was okay. One. I was like, oh, okay. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. All right. We'll have to check it out. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the, that's the main spot. There's, and it's all, you know, there's a down in various boroughs of Sacramento, up mm. in El Dorado Hills. There's some in Folsom. Yeah. We've been to, we went to Iron Horse. Yeah. We, it's like our go-to, if we're going to go out for just a casual night, that's our go-to. It's a great breakfast place, too, by the way. I've heard. Yeah. We, need, we haven't tried it for brunch yet, okay. but. Or we'll look into it. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, man, it was a pleasure to uh, – I can't believe we haven't met, and that's really my fault. I haven't been <laughs> training as much as I have in the past. That's all right. So <laughs> I know you, uh, you've heard me yelling at games. So, yep, uh, I have. <laughs> you have. Um, well, thanks. I mean, congrats on the start of the season, man. Uh, yes, thank really you. cool getting to dive into your story, too, to, the, to getting here mm -hmm. uh, and excited to see your next steps heading into – I know we're back at home on Saturday. I'm sure, sure you're fired up for that. Yeah, I'm excited to be back home. I love playing there. Yeah. I love the fans. Um, but, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. All right. Thanks, man.